sing the thunder song. When, when you hear the sound of thunder, don't you get too scared. Just grab your thunder buddy and say these magic words. Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Thunder Buddies podcast, a pre-free agency edition. Um, as what? What are we now? Uh, how many hours? Forty-eight? A little more? Before what is uh, it? Yeah. we are talking on Tuesday afternoon, eleven p.m. Thursday night, right? Yeah, so we are forty-eight plus about eight, which would be fifty-six. And they say California public education is going to the dogs. Uh, do they say that? I yes, do. they do. As I, a matter of fact, they do. I when do we were in California, it. which we were for many days, I talked to, I read some papers. I also had a, I met a friend, and we had dinner, and he talked about how bad the school and how poorly the teachers are paid and all that stuff. Well, I, and th- I said don't that, you feel like that's true, like almost everywhere well, that's these what days? I'm saying. I mean, that's just what I'm of trying to tell you. Everything. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, I don't know that it's. I'm a shining beacon. How about that? I don't know. I that just I said added that. 48. I and don't eight. know that I. I don't know that I said anything close to that. I mean, I'm 26, and I was you're able to You're shining. Have when you take that shirt off about four times a day, you're shining all right. I don't know about a beacon. Cinnamon shining. All right. Um, Glistening representative. So <laughs> this is potentially, I'm not trying to scare anyone here, but this could be the last podcast before this franchise is completely altered. Well, yeah, and a meteorite could strike us before the podcast is over, and we couldn't even get it posted. What a disaster that would be. According not- according, <laughs> according to you. How, okay, so Hold I on. said. It, like, in all seriousness, I just saw Larry David walk across the street. I am not lying. Like, in all seriousness. I highly doubt it's Larry Dude, no, David. that was Larry David. I promise you, I would not say that if that wasn't Larry David. What? Was he on our side of the street? Like, he's walking to this side of the street. He's about to walk by that window. Can we stop and go get Larry David in here? I swear to God, that's Larry David. <laughs> If you you're know, wrong, no. I'm gonna be okay. displeased. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna call skeptical on this. <laughs> Did we really stop it? Yeah. Uh, well, you know what, Barry? He left the room, but we didn't stop. Yeah, why would so. we stop the podcast? <laughs> Somebody go <laughs> running down the street like a crazy man. I got a question. Okay. What if it is Larry David? You think he's gonna come in and join the podcast? Now, if he does, then that's a good podcast move. Yeah, it that's would worth be. interrupting the podcast for. Although he's not as, I don't think he's as sharp as Malcolm Gladwell. You ever heard Malcolm Gladwell talk about sports? Y- yeah. Um, oh my goodness, I heard him on the radio today. Okay, it kind of looked like Larry David. It, oh my. <laughs> say it, say it for the, say it for the record. Okay, I'm out of breath, but that wasn't Larry David. <laughs> okay, you're, it might have been. It might have been Larry David. <laughs> oh great! I want to say something about Malcolm Gladwell because look, I love Malcolm Gladwell. I've read a lot of his books, uh, which include some sections about sports, but a lot of it's not. I mean, Outliers, great book. Blink. I mean, he's got some incredible stuff. What the a tipping mind. point. But sports. He, I heard him on the Bill Simmons podcast. This was after the Thunder Warrior series. And he was saying, why wouldn't Kevin Durant leave? It's funny you mentioned Malcolm Gladwell because we're about to have a Kevin Durant podcast. But he was saying, why wouldn't Kevin Durant leave? Basically because he'd watch this series and he has no help around him. And Sean Livingston would be the third best player on the Thunder. That's what he said. Um, And, I mean. (laughs) Well, I'm not looking. He, like, didn't even. I was like, Stephen Adams, yeah, I guess he's okay. Uh, so I'm just saying, like, yeah, I'm not looking for him. Yeah, yeah, he you're has, right. He has like good theories on stuff, and like I, yeah. I think he's doing something, some very good uh, research thing on Who Rick Barry's on? free throw shooting on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, that's what I heard soon. about. Him. Yeah, yeah. So look, fantastic mind. That? Where did he say that? Bill on? Simmons podcast. They they did a whole thing, and Bill Simmons like, I'm not sure Stephen Adams isn't like the best center in the NBA right now, <laughs> and he was like, Well, Sean Livingston be like their third best player. I was like, Sean Livingston would be like their Fifth or sixth best, but it, uh, or I think south. on any I think on any given night, like Sean Livingston can like elevate himself to like your fourth. I'm best just saying, if you court, listen to this conversation, he clearly no. had no he was not versed in the Thunder yeah, that makes and no their sense. role players. But go ahead on your point. What was my point? Something, something about Glad- Gladwell being super smart at sports. Why were oh, you bringing that well, up? Well, the, the well, just it was back to Larry David, which doesn't mean anything. My name is for. If you get somebody this like podcast that on, is not going the direction I thought it was no, going to well, Hang on with us, y'all. Just hold hang on. on, hang, just on hang, hang on. Hang on. We're getting there. Hang on. Hang on. But no. Um, 
You're right. This might be the last time we talk before Durant makes his decision. Could be. Probably is. Probably I is. mean, I'm going to summer league and Yeah, the, you're headed to Orlando. I am. Why are you going on vacation before when Kevin Durant's <laughs> making his decision? I don't understand. That is absolutely false. Going to work. Going to work hard. We're on at, at the Magic watch, Kingdom. Going to watch Cameron Payne. At the Magic Kingdom? Going to watch Cameron Payne try to perfect perfect his uh Cameron Payne. jumper. Cameron and, Payne was at the Dodger game last night. The Oklahoma City Dodger. I game. heard that. Him and Mitch McGarry. Okay, let's get into why we're here. Kevin Durant. Kevin um, Durant. So right. Darnell was on the podcast the other day. We t- we had probably had like a twenty minute segment towards the end of our last podcast talking about Durant's free agency, everything. Uh, they asked for percentages. I think Eric went somewhere around ninety. Did that was you, ninety. I think you went ninety. Darnell said a hundred, and I am slightly less optimistic i said 71 and since then i've even backed it lower to around like 65 66 now, now let's be specific this is about the one and one this isn't about it's just where term. he's going to be playing next season. next season yeah and the question is will he be playing in oklahoma city darnell said 100 you said 90 i said we'll say i'll just say 71 whatever percentages are kind of dumb in this situation anyways but i'm gonna ask it where are you you're you're pretty high on your confidence yeah, i'm still on 95 that's why are you so high i just I don't see any evidence. I see I see no evidence that he would think about leaving. What is it? What is the evidence that he would think about leaving? New adventure, new life, new new things. I don't know. So you know, sometimes what's the evidence? What if he's been something? What if he's been told behind the scenes by Russell Westbrook? He Russell Westbrook does not plan on being here past next season. Russell's not going to come out and say that publicly. No, ever. I've never seen I'm any evidence that true. Westbrook would feel that way. I just, I haven't really I either. But I'm, but, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Well, that's like, why I'm saying when, there's a five percent. I just don't like when I was writing when I was writing that story I had in the Oklahoma today for like the free the big free agents that left these these competitive teams to go elsewhere. Like it always seemed like it was something that just isn't happening with the Thunder that had to do with a guy leaving. Like Shaq, like the guy, they were lowballing Shaq in Orlando. Like Durant's not going to get lowballed. He knows when he's going to get here. He knows when he's going to get somewhere else. Like LaMarcus Aldridge behind the scenes kind of had apprehension about the, the Trailblazers putting more weight behind Damian Lillard instead of him. Like he felt slighted. Like does Durant feel slighted? I don't think anybody knows that, but odds are no. He and Westbrook seem to have a pretty good relationship. So like the things that like make these guys make these moves to go to other teams, like – it doesn't seem like it's in play with nice. Durant. Yeah, but he is taking meetings. That's something. That allows people in a room with mm-hmm. him to Not pitch true. him. That That's allows true. other things to matter. Nike, and they're $300 million behind him, You know, it allows them to try to push. It allows his friends to try to push. Like People can get in his ear, and I think there is legitimate concern from the Thunder side of things that when you allow these meetings mm-hmm. and uncertainty – all you need is potentially all you need is an hour of him on a whim. Like yes, I don't want Kevin Durant. If I'm the Thunder, I don't want Kevin Durant anywhere near Pat Riley. I don't want Pat Riley in the same room as him. Can you be? <laughs> let's do let's do mock meetings, and I want who's who's Pat Riley. Oh, I think I was. Am I Pat Riley? Barry, I think you guys should ooh, switch. Barry Trammell. I think Barry should take somebody else. Oh, Barry Trammell could be Pat Riley. I mean, we know actually what. you got you got the yeah. I got the what. I got the what? You got the Pat Riley look to you. You're I do? more seasoned than uh, me or Eric. I said. <laughs> seasoned. See, he used the right adjective oh, right off the bat. Yeah, seasoned. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh boy. All right. Well, I I wanted to do these like these mock memes. Okay. I mean, the truth is, the only way Kevin Durant's leaving is if somebody presents him something that makes him there. I, I to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna start. One of you is Kevin Durant. One of you is Rich Kleiman, or you're both Kevin Durant. Whatever. And you're um, start. I'm the Golden State Warriors. I think they're clearly the biggest threat. Okay. So I'm walking in, Steve Kerr, whoever. I mean, what's the number one thing you want, Kevin, next season? Which one of us? I'll be Kevin. You're You're both. You guys both. I'll be Kevin. Okay. I want to use his Steve, I want to win a championship, man. You want to win a title, right? I want to win a championship, Steve. Well, Kevin Durant, uh, Rich, Kleiman, would you agree? I mean, you're you're, you're, – player here is that like your number one goal next season uh well i don't know whatever kevin says is his number one goal <laughs> is his number one goal <laughs> i just I, said it i want to win a championship look okay so you want to win a title you probably think you can win one in oklahoma city i mean you pushed us to the brink six games you probably should have won that seven 
Uh, there's a chance going into next season. I don't know who's favorites, but it would be us, right, in the West. People would say Spurs up there too, but it's going to be Thunder Warriors. You could argue who could win. But, but, but Steve, like, we just really put it on y'all, basically. I mean, we kind of dominated. Oh, did you the, put did we, you put it on us, or did we beat you in seven games? Yeah, but but <laughs> but we but we dominated the series until me and Russ kind of had our little spaz attack. I mean, how would you improve upon that? And then and then I watched you guys against the Cavs, and like Steph looked really out of it. And I mean, your bit part guys weren't there, and, and LeBron just took over and just manhandled you guys. Like, how are y'all going to fix that? I can see that? where you can be a little worried about my big man situation. All right. But the truth is, Kevin Durant, we will now have Kevin Durant on our team. And guess who our biggest rival won't have on their team? Kevin Durant. Where if you stay with the Thunder, you may win the title next season, but you may lose to us. If you come and play with us, who's competing with us? Because the Thunder aren't anymore. I'm not sure the Spurs are now that you're on our team. And I think we can beat the Cavs because I think you can play LeBron better. And I think we're rolling to a title. Whereas if you stay with the Thunder, I mean, you might, but you might just lose to us again. Yeah, but then there's that thing that I said about. Remember when I said, Rich, about the the good people thing? Uh, I mean, the basketball thing, the Warriors. You, know, you don't I, think you, we got good You guys good have people? a great. You, you, you tried to kick my boy Stephen Adams in the nutbag like a couple times, man. I don't know about that Draymond, Draymond character. Draymond Green is just he's trying to win ball games. All right, is you're that, you're you're friendly with him. Hey, you spent a little time with him this past week on USA. You're gonna spend yeah, more time yeah, with him yeah, this summer. Yeah, Draymond Green is just he's just a competitor. Well, I don't know, man. I'm not all about that kind of like ball kicking tactics, Rich. Uh, I, I I think Draymond and I. I might think need you to can sit- get over this, Kevin. What What is your thought on on the Warriors pitch? I mean, look, this is we're clearly. Uh, I think at least I can see your argument with the Thunder, but there's How nobody else around. How much of your team here. are you going to have to dismantle to sign Kevin? Yeah, I want some help. Yeah, you know, Bogut. We're, we're gonna have to unload his salary. Um, what about Iguodala? Renouncing, renouncing Barnes. We're going to pretty much have to strip almost everything, but I, we can bring. Obviously, Curry's going to stay. Clay Thompson's going to stay. Draymond's going to stay. And I believe we can keep Iguodala. Get you. Everyone else is probably going to have to fill in on vet minimums. But Kevin, can you? You could probably recruit, and then suddenly we have. Think about that starting lineup: Steph, Clay, uh, Iguodala. Uh, Katie at the four, you at the four, um, and Draymond at the five. Small ball nightmare. Probably the best. You know, you think the death lineup was good. You're basically all you're doing is taking Harrison Barnes away and putting in Kevin Durant. Uh, it's just like destruction lineup. And then you know we could fill in bit pieces off the bench. What the bench really doesn't matter with that crew. You know, I kind of wanted to. I mean, I haven't told anybody about this. Uh, this is Kevin Durant talking, by the way. I haven't told anybody about this, but. I kind of had this feeling that I wanted to do this and I wanted to be the guy, you know? And what if I go to you guys and people like blame me because y'all had this historic season and we take a step back or maybe we lose in the second round or we don't get as far. Like everybody's going to come after me, man. It's not going to be about Steph and his cute baby girl or Clay and his like nonchalant attitude. It's going to be about me ruining everything. So what's going to happen, man? Because Kevin, I could see that argument if, we just won a second straight title and we're coming back and everyone's in love with, with what we've done. But the problem is we lost. Everyone is criticizing us right now. We need you. You don't need us as much as we need you. Where I could see if we were one winning a second straight title, you'd be apprehensive to come latch on to that. But we didn't win the title. And, and the fans know that. And everyone wants you. Our entire fan base wants you here. And, you know, you may be worried like uh, you're going to come in and, and kind of play second fiddle to Steph Curry. But the truth is, if you just come and you start scoring 35, 40 points a night, like you're very, very capable of. Maybe Steph will be playing second fiddle to me. Yeah, maybe, Kevin, maybe. Hey, we're going to have to talk about this with Rich, but I appreciate you taking your time out for me, Steve. Uh, there's some uh, hors d'oeuvres and stuff in the waiting room out there. by uh, in our Rock Doc, Doc Rivers already ate them all. Oh, Doc. All right, get Doc in here, man. Uh, and tell him to wipe his mouth. That's disgusting. All right, Doc's coming in. Who's Clippers? I'm Clippers. Hey, Kev, it's Doc Rivers. Hey, I got CP3 on speakerphone, man. Uh, Rich, nice to see you. Kev, what are your questions do you have for We're being joint, me? Kev, now because you, you got to get involved. Um, we got a lot of questions. What kind of depth's been a huge problem for the, for the Clippers? And putting me on the payroll is not going to help that any. What? Well, putting, putting me with Griffin and Paul and Jordan sounds great, but... 
Well, I got a bigger concern, first of all. I have heard rumblings uh, from what I've read online. You cannot add me. You you couldn't even take every single person off your roster except for Paul, Griffin, and Jordan, and you still couldn't max me out because of what they're making. So are you going to trade Blake Griffin? So am I coming to the Clippers without Blake Griffin? Kevin, I hate to tell your brother, but Blake ain't going to be here next year. We're gonna, Breaking news. We're going we're gonna to need you. If, if, if we're bringing you in, we're going to need you at Power 4, my man. But you know what? You'd be playing Power 4 for the Warriors. You'd be playing Power 4 for the Thunder. You know, I don't know. They got some young big men in Oklahoma City. Not as much. Oh. But you'd be playing a little bit in that small ball lineup. But I know you and Russ are friends. I know you guys both like to have the ball in your hands. But how would you like to have the ball in your hands in – some more advantageous situations. I'm not sure because Chris Paul might like to have the ball in his hands more than Russell likes it. Chris likes to have it too. He's a point guard. <laughs> he dribbles. But Chris ain't going to be taking errant three pointers. Chris is go gonna, on. Chris is going to try and get in somebody's stuff on defense every now and then. Now I'm not saying he's a better defender than Russ. Sounds we can work, like you we are. Can work dog. something out. That's not what I'm saying, dog. That's not what I'm saying, baby. <laughs> hey, not to mention. How you like that LA lifestyle, baby? That you you finally have something positive that you've presented to me. I do enjoy LA. Hey, live look, there in the off season. Who doesn't enjoy LA? I'm Rich, not, you love coming out and visiting me in LA, don't you? I like LA. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a possibility. Let me ask you about this, uh, Doc. You're going to trade Blake Griffin. I'm going to get Sam. Let me on, ask you this. I'm going to get Sam on the phone. We're going to talk. What about if we things. did a sign and trade? And Thunder actually needs a power forward. They've, they've lost a Baca. I would, you know, it'd be best probably not to leave the Thunder completely high and dry here. I do yeah, respect. I, th- I think Kevin would look better if he if he orchestrated a tri- sign and trade. If he decided to leave, giving Oklahoma City some sort of consolation prize would would make him, you know, come across as much better in the in the eyes of Thunder fans. Kevin, I got, I got another thing for you. Not only am I going to throw Sam a bone, and it's going to look good on your part because. You didn't leave the Thunder high and dry. You gave them something. You gave them their hometown son. You gave them Blake Griffin. But your man Kobe Bryant just retired, Kevin. The the king of L.A. throne is vacant. This could be your city. Go on. The Lakers aren't going anywhere. We know this. Let me ask. I, mean, I got a problem, Doc. Here's a problem. What's the problem? It seems to me to still be a Laker town. Not when Kevin Durant rolls in. It seems to me, even with the Lakers stinking, with the Clippers soaring, that the Lakers were still the show. I'll put it like this. The Clippers have been a lot better when I've played them the last few years, but I still go in that arena, and it's a lot more fun for me to play against the Lakers in that Laker environment than I, it is when it's it's red in there. and These people have been fans for about two days. I'm getting a tingling on the back of my neck thinking about this being Kevin Durant's town. And bringing in that feeling of Ubuntu that we had in Boston. The Can I stop you there? I'll can go, I stop you there? I'll, don't make me go one, get your boy Kendrick Perkins in are here, Are you getting loud with me? Because I can kick you out of this room right now. I'm sorry, Kevin. Go ahead. Um, young Pete, young core behind the roster. The thing is, like, I'm really – the favorite here, I'm probably going to go back to the Thunder. And the thing that they've done is Andre Robertson's 24. Steven Adams, who is – a you know, near DeAndre Jordan level type player is 22. He's growing. Oladipo, we just got. You know, he's mm-hmm. coming in. Um, Canner's 24. So I like that core that I may go back to. And the problem when I look at your core is old. You haven't developed any talent. You haven't drafted well. And what makes me think you're going to be able to identify, draft, and develop into the future? I mean, this. The Clippers, not only are you seemingly a kind of a cursed franchise that I'd be a little afraid to step in into, too. I'm not sure you, Doc Rivers, will be there in a few years if this thing doesn't go well. It just seems very unstable. I think the whole idea of bringing in Victor Oladipo might be a little overblown by you guys because y'all have never had a shooting guard that can do it like him. You guys have never had a bench. We got J.J. Redick. He ain't a bench. He's... He's a hell of a shooter. Yeah, He's well, an underrated guess, defender. Guess what? You may, yeah, I guess if you trade Blake for me, you now don't have Blake, though. 
but we got you, baby. I don't know, man. I'm, I don't. Rich, what do you think? And their, their core is just. The, there's questions about the core. There's questions about the stability, the spotlight. You know, the Clippers are better than the Lakers. Much better right now. Three years from now, I don't know if that's going to be the truth. Chris Paul is an old thirty. Blake Griffin is an old twenty-six or whatever he is. I'm I'm worried about the Clipper future. Oh wait, hold on, guys. I'm getting a text. Oh man. Okay. Uh, Austin is in trouble. Flat tire in Manhattan. Talk it out of here. Def- <laughs> All right, I gotta go, guys. Kev, Kev, Rich, y'all got my number. Uh, I think I see Greg Popovich outside in the in the locker room. Ooh, Not the I, locker I love room, me though, some Greg. Yeah. I'll holler at you boys. Hey, it's always sunny in L.A. It's pretty sunny in OKC, too. Who's Greg Popovich? I think that's me. <laughs> oh, this is perfect. Because stopping here, Barry Trammell is and probably Greg Popovich is what? Spirit in, animal. In, in Spirit top, animal. In his top ten media members, I'd say you, you're probably in the top ten. I think Craig Sager's probably number one. If there's any, he treats me. He treats me fine. I have no idea. There's, he, there's he no walks great. Walks into press conferences and sits down and looks right at you like, "What you got, man?" There's very few. There's little. There's scant evidence that he even knows my name. So let's not go overboard. I feel like he, he gets butt tapped him one time after a question. Said, "Good question." <laughs> I feel like he gets on better with you than he does with San Antonio's media. Well, yeah, but the truth is, Barry's earned Popovich's respect in one sense. First of all, Barry's good at asking questions, but he just asked Greg. Popovich, uh, a lot of questions. Um, and a few of them over time he's really shut you down with, but I think he's come to respect your question. And that's why he always sits down and, and you know, the truth is he, he always gets in his room and he can feels like he, he knows he's intimidating everyone, but very just kind of like, whatever, when he starts asking questions. I think he kind of gets a kick out of this one dude over there that just keeps asking. So can I be Pop now? Yeah, you're Pop, sorry. Greg, nice to see you again. Uh, it was fun playing you guys in the playoffs. Tim Duncan looks really old. But here, let's hear your pitch. Hey, hey, uh, who's Kevin here? I was Kevin just okay, now. Okay, I'm ready. I'm sorry, hey, I'm out of line. I was, was going to say Kevin. That was a little out of line because Tim Duncan's here too. He, he literally heard <laughs> oh, you hey, say Tim. that. Oh, hey, Tim. Hey, hey. <laughs> Listen, he Kevin. Is, reportedly, not, by the way, he is supposed to be. We're not Tim. playing any games, Kevin. We're not playing any games. You don't, Greg, you don't. Here's the deal. You said it's a basketball. You're about basketball. Kevin, in San Antonio, we're about basketball. That's what we're about. We don't monkey around. We don't play games. We don't, we don't worry about anything except basketball and winning games. And you know what? We don't have the best talent in the league. We don't have the biggest market in the league. We don't have the biggest flash in the league. We just show up, work hard, and, and try to win. And that's what we've been doing for 15 and 16 and 17 years. And everyone thought we were getting old and we're going to fall off the cliff. We've been revitalized by Kawhi Leonard and LaMarcus Aldridge. And if you join us, there's our front line, and we're going to go out and we're going to try to win with with those guys. And that's, you know what, I like our chances, but I like our chances with or without you because we work hard. And That's what we do. Number one, what are you going to have to do to – your roster to obtain and max out my man Kevin Durant right here. And two, I know you're right. You have a three really solid, you know, probably future Hall of Fame players. Definitely, you know, if Kevin comes in, it'd be Kevin, Kawhi Leonard, LaMarcus Aldridge. Great front line. A little redundant. That's three forwards. What are you going to do with, first of all, you might have to let Danny Green go. Like, what's your backcourt going to look like? What's your bench going to look like? Well, we're working on that. But I can tell you this. People like playing in San Antonio. David West gave up about $12 million this past season to play in San Antonio, Texas. Professional people like playing there. Yes. And you know what? Uh, We need to get younger in the backcourt. No doubt about it. We need to get better in the backcourt. I love Tony Parker, but Tony's on the downside. We're going after a point guard. We're going to try to find a point guard. I hear a lot of trying to find. The problem is you just don't. Here's the deal. We generally do – I mean, I'm not telling you – I don't know who we're going to get because – Because you're not really good we get, till you, we, you imitation. Till we get Kevin Durant, we got a lot of – you know, the, this is our option A right here. But I can tell you this. The guys we get will be able to play. Well, if it's Tony Parker and Patty Mills, fine. If it's Mike Connolly, great. If it's 
You know, if we, if, if we get George Hill back from Salt Lake City, great. But I can tell you this. We're going to play good basketball, and if it's Kawhi Leonard and Marcus Aldridge and Kevin Durant as our three forwards in the starting lineup, I like our chances. I really respect you guys as a franchise. I do have concerns about potentially getting a significant other and bringing them around Tony Parker. These are some things I've heard. Um, oh, geez. But this guy's just getting into the Like I said, hey, no, I'm right. not because good people, good basketball, these things are hand in hand. Uh, Kevin, as your confidant, I would have to assure you the Spurs are pretty well known as good people in that organization. You, you do seem to have a pretty solid relationship with Mr. Popovich over here. No, I, I do like Greg. I mean, I hope when, when the next Olympic cycle comes around, I'm, I'm there and I get to play for Greg. I, I, as I said, I do have concerns going forward about the point guard position. I got a, I got something I'm concerned about for Kevin. I want look, this is this isn't you know just a, an all star. This is a transcendent figure in sports. It, will will he come in? And I know you have Kawhi Leonard. I know you have Lamarcus Aldridge. I know you guys aren't about this flash and dash. Where, and and I and I know Kevin liked that from a basketball perspective. But can you turn him into the global? superstar keep him that way get him all the endorsements he needs uh and he'll be the face of face of your franchise no tim duncan no these guys like they're all great pieces but kevin is now the face of it all i don't just want a h-e-b commercial you know it's not that's not gonna be good kevin enough, man kevin you just turn him into rich just asked if we can turn you into a global uh superstar no you already are one in oklahoma city Maybe the most similar NBA city to San Antonio in terms of size and culture and uh, even uh, history. You're already there. Coming to the Spurs, the franchise of Robinson, the franchise of Duncan, is not going to hurt your brand. Personally, I don't think anything's going to help or hurt your brand. Your brand is what it is, and it's not going anywhere, and it's – it's going to be epic no matter who you sign with. That's what I'm saying. The truth of the matter is, I don't know what kind of commercials you're going to get. I don't really care. I'm, I'm thinking about how I can use Kevin Durant to guard the Warriors and score on the Warriors and how I can use Kevin Durant to stop LeBron and score on LeBron. That's what's on my mind. And I don't know if I do it better than anybody else, but we got a pretty good track record around here. So if you're worried about the brand, I'm not your man to talk to. Good pitch, Greg. Handshake, and we'll see you. Greg, that was some solid stuff. Uh, who do we have next? Celtics. I'll be the Celtics. Oh, it's Brad Stevens. Kevin. What up? Tom Brady. What is uh? What does he mean to you, the sports world? What does he mean to you? I, I, I've i read some quotes, Kevin. I've read some quotes about you talking about him, the greatest QB ever. I know you're an NFL fan. That guy, that guy's outstanding, and he's got a great-looking wife, and uh, he's a winner. David Ortiz. Big Poppy. I mean, legends. Boston sporting legends. Larry Bird. Probably your favorite player ever, huh? He's fantastic, man. I love kind of plays a little plays. bit like you. you. You you watch his games on Hardwood Classic, don't you? Do a little bit of everything. You know, Larry Legend. He was fantastic, man. One of the you, best small forwards ever. Look, I, you play with Russell Westbrook. Great player. Kind of hogs a little bit. I want to say hogs your spotlight. May hog the ball a little bit. But he uh, takes a little of your spotlight. You go to Golden State. You're you're walking into Steph Curry's team. Even San Antonio. like They have some great players. You come here. Anything and everything you want. You are the face of Boston sports for the next 10 years. Because guess what? David Ortiz retiring this season. Tom Brady nearly 40 years old. He's going to be gone soon. You suddenly are Boston sports. And that is a very, very important thing to be. Brad, let me ask you this as, as Kevin's agent. Everything you said is true. No doubt about it. However, Kevin wants to be successful. He wants to be a champion. He's been Surrounded by some really good players, some great players. Going to Boston, at least now, at least initially, would be a step back in talent. I'm just not really convinced. So what what kind of yeah. – what do you well, see in Boston well, for the next one, two, three years that makes you think 
there's a parade coming to Beantown. Okay, let's let's start here. If you're going to the Warriors, let's not deal with the Thunder. I know they got some advantages here, all right? If if you're thinking about Warriors or Spurs, they got to gut their rosters. We do not have to gut our roster. We don't have to trade anyone. We already have – not only do we have max cap right now, we can sign another guy. We can get, You like Al Horford? You like playing with Al Horford? I mean, good, good ball player. There's other guys out there. We got assets to potentially get, you know, we can still maybe push for like a try to get a Jimmy Butler in here. We have a lot of maneuverability around you, and we want you to be part of that conversation on who you want to play next to because guess what? You're the face of Boston sports now. You can work with us on that. Um, you're probably right. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and deny that uh, next year your team, our team, the Boston Celtics, won't be as good as potentially – the Thunder or, or the Warriors, but you know this is a long term move. We feel like um, you're the long term face of this franchise. We have a lot of nice pieces. Avery Bradley, who you know from Texas, um, Marcus Smart, you know Isaiah Thomas. Like we got pieces around you. You're the face of it. We can build around you. And bigger than maybe all of it, you're in the East, which is terrible beyond the Cavs. LeBron James was fantastic a couple weeks ago, but he still will be 32 years old next season. We feel like you can really compete in the East for years to come in a major sports market. I do like the prospect of being in the East, but and I know you guys have a lot of a lot of things that y'all can offer to other teams, but but what puts you ahead of a, a team like a New York or a Toronto who already has guys in place that I that I think I have more trust in than some of the guys you have there? Like a, you like got a trust Brandon. in Derrick Rose in his knee. Well, Carmelo Anthony more so. I think he's uh, a pretty Carmelo good and his bulky knee and, and his thirty you know, what is he, thirty two, thirty three? But Toronto's got Drake, man. He's my homie. See, Kevin, this is not how I expected you to be, Kevin. Good people, good basketball. What is what does Drake have to do with that? He's good people. He's a nice guy. He doesn't play basketball. I like Kyle Lowry. Congrats. He's a decent player. He's a free agent next year. Hey, Rich, get straighten your climate client out. He's talking about Kyle Lowry over here. Well, here's the thing. We like Boston. We like everything we see. You've got a lot of good pieces. I don't see any other great pieces. And, frankly, I see a lot of still sorting out. I don't know. Everybody else we're talking to, the Thunder, the Warriors, the Spurs, uh, even if we go down to the Heat, whoever, everybody has a sense of who they are. I get the sense that Boston is still just trying to figure out we want Who's in its future? Kevin Durant to be us. We want. We yeah. want. But I mean, who is is? You is, know what, Kevin? Avery Bradley, Marcus Smart, Mar, uh, Isaiah Thomas. I don't even know who your backcourt, you know, is going to be two years from now. Kevin, yes. I'm going to stop you right there because you have some valid points. I knew we were battling uphill. Keep that thought. Remember all of what I've laid out for you in the Boston future. And I'm going to push you. You should probably sign this one-year deal in Oklahoma City. And uh, let's. Ha- how about we meet this time next year? And uh, we may have a better grasp on that. And we may be able to offer you even more money because uh, you'll be 10 years in the league. Same time next year. Same time next year. You know, Brad, I like, I like you. I'm You're Danny Age, by the way. Why do you keep calling me Brad? Brad's over I there. I thought you were Brad. Oh, Sorry. I thought you were Brad. We thought, y'all, look, y'all look very similar. Hey, by the way. I know we look pretty similar, but um, that's enough. I didn't mention my man Brad. You thought I was Brad. Okay. He's a coach that's pretty good. Like, we got to go, but tell Brad we need to get on the phone and talk. And if this whole thing doesn't work out with a one year wherever I sign, I don't know if I'm going to sign with you guys, to be honest. I'm just be frank. Y'all might want to look somewhere else. But let's come back in 2017, maybe. Okay? Maybe. Boom. Sounds good. We'll see you. We'll see you next year this time. Watch our games this year. Get League Pass. Okay. I can really coach. Is that? Just kidding, Brad can. Is that Pat Riley out there? Is is that, is that Barry, Pat Riley? Barry's got a Pat Riley look to him. So you got to be Pat is that, Riley. Is that slick back Pat? Kev, how you doing? Pat, good to see you, Pat, man. Pat, those are some impressive rings you're I wearing. I bought these rings, and here's the deal. I know how to put together a basketball team. I know how to put together a championship basketball team. I've done it on multiple coasts. And here's the thing. I know that we did it with LeBron, but LeBron's gone. And this city, a city you love, you owned a home here not so long ago. Sold it. You you like this place, and this place is starved to return to the championship level. And here's the deal. Dwayne Wade, needs a, he needs a sidekick. 
he he doesn't he doesn't need a sidekick. He wants to be a sidekick again. He once was. He'd do it again. He needs to be Robin in this situation. Are you? Is he comfortable? Yes. yes. He became comfortable. He did in, in okay. Miami with LeBron. I, you can own South Florida the way LeBron owned it. I I've got a question though. If I'm gonna be Batman, and Wade's gonna be Robin, we're gonna need a Batmobile. Chris Bosh would have been our Batmobile. I think Hassan Whiteside might be the Batmobile, but I'm not sure how you, how you guys feel about him either. First of all, how do you fit it all in? You and, got a lot and of y'all got a lot parts. of y'all got a lot of money, including Hassan Whiteside. I don't think that DM thing was true, where he was DMing some, some if girl Kevin online about he's going to Kevin Los Durant Angeles. signs. Hassan is coming back. He's assured me. He Hassan be, is giving you assurances. He wants to be a title. He wants to be Hassan, on a title team himself. Okay. From the outside looking in, Hassan seems a little shaky from a uh, winning standpoint. Hassan you know. has some baggage. Hassan has some issues. But Hassan will adapt. Hassan is excited about being around a player and a person. The stature of Kevin Durant. So, are you lying to me, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pat, are you lying to us? Uh, I'm just like Chris Bosh, just the unknown. It will like is his career over? Like he missed the last we season hope because not. of blood. We clots. hope he plays, uh, but see, I can't give see, you any insurance. That's the problem. I can't give you any insurance about Chris. Two straight years. We've we've had our hearts broken and and we we just were crushed for Chris because we think so much of him, just a total class act. But another reason to come to Miami to be around the likes of Chris Bosh, the consummate professional. You you're a very professional organization. Dwayne Wade, clearly you're right. He could easily take another step back, um, and it'd be great to be the face of South Florida and not and it'd be great to live in South Florida. I mean that is the, you know. Give me a digital tour right now of, of some of these beachfront homes, and maybe I'll sign. But you just there's two unknown. You hope Chris Bosh can play again. You hope Dwayne Wade's knees hold up. You know he's what 34 now. Um, you got a, some nice little young pieces. Justice Winslow, those types. Hassan Whiteside scares me. I basically have Hassan Whiteside back in Oklahoma City from a talent standpoint with Stephen Adams, but in hundred complete 180 mentality from Hassan Whiteside as far as team basketball player. Um, so I'm going to have to say thank you for talking to me. I may talk to you again in uh, 2017, but can't really can't really sign on to that unknown. Holler back in a year. We'll keep in touch. Thanks, Kevin. All right, Thunder. The I, I, I believe the Thunder are going to get the last word in this situation. And by the way, I'm talking to Zan. Why wouldn't again. they get? You, so does that mean they get the first and the I'm last? I'm not saying. Maybe, maybe and first. By first, I don't mean first as in July first on Friday that they'll get to talk to him. But I mean they've been talking to him for eight, yes. nine years, and there's not any doubt that they've been talking to All him. All I'm saying is, I believe that. Regardless of what happens, all the meetings, Kevin's not going to make a haste decision, sign, and then suddenly call Sam Presti and go, Let me ask you hey, I signed. I think he's going to call and say, hey, Let me ask Sam, you guys a question. I think I'm going to. You got the last word. Well, in a minute, we're going to talk about what's this pitch going to sound like from Sam Presti. What do you think, Sam, what do you think the Sam Presti-Kevin Durant exit interview went like? How, what transpired I, in Sam's office that day? I know what I know how Sam started it, and it was and he. They almost kind of hinted at both in their exit interviews. He started with like Kevin, think about where we we are, where we were last year. You were in a boot in this office. You know, he, they talked about how how great it was the past year that he really put the foot injuries beside you know behind him. Had this fantastic season, um, but then I in the exit interview. They couldn't avoid the elephant in the room. I mean, I'm not saying they talked money or anything. Obviously, that's just going to be the max. But I bet you they talked about the future of the roster, the stability, Serge's play, and like, you know, hey, Kevin, I'm thinking about maybe shopping Serge around. What do you think about that? That might have been when the Serge conversation happened. So he knew that Kevin might be okay if he got a good haul back. Um, I think they just talked about the future of the roster, maybe even like the the idea of the one-in-one contract and – 
um, kind of felt him out a little bit, and, but also probably was pretty respectful about it. What do you guys think? I think that I'm sure what you said is right. I also think there was talk about not just look back where we were a year ago, look back where we were eight years ago, look back where we were seven and a half years ago when we got to town with literally nothing except hope, and look how close we are. Look how far we've come. Look how fantastic the landscape seems to be. And maybe he maybe he even told him, we're going to trade Serge Ibaka for Victor Oladipo and, and get a lottery pick to boot. But look back at all those things, and do you really – do you really want it to end here? Is this is this where you'd like it to end? This close to what we've all worked for. Sam, you're allowed in the room. Hey guys, uh, I was just outside, you know, had my Beats headphones on, listening to some Miles Davis. It's kind of strange, but all right. I like to I like to vibe out before meeting. So um, I have a full attaché here. But first of all, Kevin, uh, how's New York been so far, man? Uh, it's been a few weeks, but <laughs> I've had some great pitches. Yeah, yeah. I just saw Pat. Man, he seemed like he was pretty pleased. I think I'm maybe going to the Warriors. They War- just, I think Warriors, right? That's that. That to me is uh, kind of the only option I'm, I'm considering. The other ones, I don't know. What do you think, Rich? Warriors. Well, I want you happy, Kevin. <laughs> First of all, I, want- I just mean from a smart. I want this you is, happy. Yeah, I know you do. So let me ask you a question. Money, it's all the same. It's just money. We, we They're go, maxing me out we everywhere. Can go, we can go print money wherever. If, if we don't Nobody's make talking money in these meetings. Right. It's the max everywhere. So what's going to make you happy? Where do you want to live? Do you want to win titles? I do want to win titles how do you, immediately. How do you want to win titles? Is it, is it important to you to win one in Oklahoma City, the franchise you built, or are all titles created equal? I don't think they're all created equal, but one is better than zero. And if I can 100% get one in Golden State, that's better than never getting one in Oklahoma City. How comfortable are you, Kev, with the Warrior coaching staff, the Warrior management, the Warrior ownership? It seems first rate in most regards. PR staff's big time. <laughs> Let me tell you that. I mean, it's, it's clearly Steve Kerr. They've created a, a very person. good environment there. Silicon Bob Valley, My- they're moving into an arena in Bob Myers, you know, first class. Now, the owners, the ownership can be a little squishy. Yeah, I mean, I, I so, can't remember Clay Bennett coming out and saying some of the things that Joe Lake yeah. said. So, so, I mean, uh, those are things. Uh, if that matters to you, you have to consider it. If it doesn't matter to you, don't consider it. Um, you've got to think about, you know, the, the community. I mean, I don't. I'm not trying to pretend that you're born and bred in Oklahoma City, but you spent a lot of time there. I've called it home in the past. And, you know, you've said a lot of things about it, virtually all of them positive. If you leave now, I don't think they're going to burn your jersey in the street, but... Only takes one idiot to but I also, uh, down I, at Skinny but I Slims. Also, but I also think that, you know, that will, you know, that will diminish your... your uh, Standing, Brent, you're standing there, and your your legacy there. I, I, maybe that doesn't matter to you, and I'm not saying it should. I'm just saying those are things to consider. Those are things to consider. And the guys you're playing with, the people you're working for. We don't have to always just look up at the management and coaches and owners. We can look down. We can look at, you know, Wilson, and we can look at Saint and and Maddie and all those guys. I mean, it, does that kind of thing matter to you? I'm not saying it should. I'm not saying I know if it does. I'm just saying, do the people around you matter to you? And if if not, then I think it's a go where you want to. But if they do, it's something to consider. I think Rich said a lot of good things there. <laughs> but, um, Kevin? Rich, I thought you were on my side. <laughs> I understand the appeal of the Warriors. They have a great franchise. I understand the appeal of a Pat Riley, even. I think he's a he's a great man. I think the Spurs have a great organization. I think there are many great organizations in this great organization that we call the National Basketball Association. I'm concerned about your well-being. I love you. We've had you here for nine years now. 
I want to see what's best for you, and I want you to be happy. So does Russell. So does Steven. Is Russell going to be here? He will definitely be here next season. You know that. Be on next season? I'm not worried about beyond next season right now, Kevin. I've always been I've always been focused on the here and now. I'm worried about you beyond next season just for your general well being and happiness. As Rich said, he wants you to be happy. I want you for this year, I want you to continue your happiness with a place that you're comfortable with. And I know that this next year is gonna be a tough transition. If you do it with the Warriors, it might be a tough transition. If you stay with us, it might be tough because Serge isn't here. But I want you to know that you'll always be at home with us, with Russ, the best point guard in the league, with Victor Oladipo, who we just brought in, who we think is really going to be a valuable asset to this team going forward. You f- do you guys feel like uh, the offense is getting to a point to a better point with Billy Donovan. I mean, f- from your perspective, th- that, you know, there's going to be more fluidity. It's not going to be as much Russell dribbling and, and pulling up. And uh, The defense can consistently be, be where it's at. Do you – I mean, I know how I kind of feel about the Thunder, but where do you guys kind of view Well, it? it seems to me the Thunder offense was better the longer the season went and was, frankly, much improved over what we'd seen earlier. I couldn't have been more impressed with the job that Billy done in terms of making adjustments, particularly in the playoffs, when faced with the adversity of a Golden State that can put you in those adverse situations. He took Ennis and made him a a valuable tool. He took Andre and made him a valuable tool. I have no doubt that he'll take Victor Oladipo and make him a valuable tool. I I have no doubt that he'll take at times uh, DeMantis Sabonis and make him a valuable tool. So I think that Billy showed in his first year his his willingness and his ability to be able to mold this team into the best team going forward. What other roster tweaks do you feel like can be made going into next season? Would you like Dion back, Kevin? Will you bring him back at any price if I tell you to? I most certainly will because we're worried about this year. Let's say I didn't want Dion back. I may. I may want him back at any price. But if renouncing him and doing some, like, can you do some other maneuvering? And do you feel like you can maybe get another piece in here? Maybe a, I don't know. I mean, I know I'd be, I would help here by signing on and, and going to trying to convince these people. And I'd be a key recruiter here. But like a Pau Gasol, I mean, I know I, as part of it, failed a couple years ago to bring him in. But now that he experienced, the traumatic bull situation. Um, a couple years older, maybe he is just strictly trying to win a title. And, you know, you guys now have an – or we, if I come back, now have an opening at power forward. Pal could potentially fit in there. I mean, do you think you could free up the money and convince a guy like that or or another vet? Well, we, we're not going to be able to free up the money. And in the time frame that we're looking It would at, have to be the mid-level exception. We'd have to convince somebody to come and play at a discount. But we think we might can do that. I mean, we think we've got a good case. We got two Sam Presties in the room now. Not, I'm, I'm right. Troy Weaver. Hey, right Troy. Now. Oh, hey, Troy. Not just a maybe a Paul Gasol, but maybe on the wing as well. Maybe Dwayne Wade wants to come and play for us in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Troy, I like you, but Troy. So if, you don't go, if you don't go to Miami, Kevin. And Chris Bosch doesn't come back. Does 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 Dwayne Wade want to play out the string in Miami? Oh wait, uh, Kev, I got Russell calling me. Hang on a second, Russ. We're gonna put you on speakerphone. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Russ. Kev, Kev, you there? Yes. Hey, man. You doing all right? Yes. We got one more season. Let's go get these fools, man. I'm talking about Golden State. <laughs> we almost had them. I don't know. I don't know, Russ. I'm thinking about becoming your enemy. Why? Because I know me and the Warriors could whoop you and the Thunder without me. You you know. I mean, we, we had him up 3-1, and I'm the most dynamic point guard in the league, and, and now I got Vic coming in, too. He's real excited. You're right. It's probably wise to complete this story 
give it one more go around, one and one deal. You guys will max me out, and then Russ will 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 figure things out next summer. Bro, we're a supernova, man. Me and you. All right, and scene. Oh wait, wait, wait! What? Before we go, before we go, look, I got, I got, I got, I got a steak on the grill, but. You got to induct me into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame next season. Yeah, I can do that. So you can't life. leave. It, like real talk. I don't have to. I mean, like but but I want Ray you to. Westbrook or somebody. No, nah, man, I want you to. I want you to. You're my boy. Yeah, you want me back? That's what you want. All right, and see, I mean, those are kind of awkward and weird the entire time. But I think you could see within that that to me the Thunder's pitch is the pitch is the strongest, and the Warriors to me are really the only. Maybe the Spurs on the back end if he really, really wants to go in that environment. But to me, the Warriors, it's Thunder Warriors, in my opinion. Seems most likely. Seems most likely. Boston next year, as we talked about. Yeah. Uh, Miami, if they were a little bit – if Chris Bosh was healthy, Miami – Maybe. Would, They're old. Yeah, but they, they could be in there. They could. They right. could. Uh, but that's about it. But Chris Bosh isn't, so to me that just takes him out. And white sides – they got they got too many moving parts. Yeah, so I th- I think it is those three and and San Antonio is that would really is, surprise that'd me. That'd be the bottom one. Do y'all think there's any chance that not this season but next with LeBron back in Cleveland and Cleveland maybe like dealing Kevin Love and freeing up cap space that they could get in for Kevin Durant? I'm not sure he'd go join LeBron. Doesn't seem it seems like Stepping into a shadow. That's how it feels like for me with Golden State. Well, me too, but even more of it's a shadow. Different. Even it's more different. of a shadow. Steph Curry's Steph Curry's kind of this. Uh, he's sort of. A, he's, he's not an anomaly, but he's not LeBron. He's yet. a wink, wink, you know, icon. I mean, everybody sort of knows that Steph Curry's more of a mascot in terms of out, you know, epic ball players. He's not LeBron or. Shaq or Kobe or somebody like that. The guys that, like, LeBron has done this for 13 years. Like, Curry, incredible. Two straight MVPs, but he's really only been considered a superstar for two seasons. Um, he's old. I, I believe he's old. Is he older than KD? Or they're the same uh, age? I think right they're right about the same, the same. Right at the same age. Yeah. Um, I think Kevin would have a lot more confidence he could go in and – I don't want to say overtake Curry and take his team away from him, but like Kevin probably feels like he's a better player than Steph Curry. I'm not sure Kevin deep down thinks he's a better player or icon than LeBron James. No, I would agree. I just I think Kevin's coming back, most likely on a one year deal. But I think the the rich pitch that I made basically seals it. I mean, I don't think his business is done. I don't think his I don't think his story is finished here in his mind. And he's got okay, – and because of the way the CBA and his contract, everything else plays out, he basically gets another year. You know, it's almost like a – It's an escape route for him yeah, exactly. this summer. Exactly. And uh, and listening to all these pitches and, and, just, and just thinking about, like, literally being Kevin Durant and sitting in a room with, like, Bob Myers trying to pitch this to me, like, I almost feel like – if I was a superstar and I just went up 3-1 on the Warriors, like my pride would be extremely strong to say, you know, I can go beat those guys without having to join them. And I don't know what Kevin Durant's thinking, but if I can get the same amount of money in Oklahoma City and play with Russell Westbrook and I've fought with that guy and I've fought with Deion Waiters and I've fought with Steven Adams and I know how close I was to, to beating a team that good, it would be really difficult for me to say – in, in 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 a matter of months. Okay, I'm gonna go join that team. Couple of interesting things here that I think helped the Thunder. Um, number one, I look. I don't think I think the Warriors a little bit might you know without if they get Kevin Durant they turn into a super team. If they don't, they're a little bit in an unknown situation as far as the franchise is going. Andre Iguodala is getting older. He couldn't really make it through the finals. He's got injury issues. Andrew Bogut, big time injury issues. Uh, do they unload him? Who knows. The Barnes situation uh, is up in the air. He really struggled. Like, they're big men. Like, compare their big men to the Thunder. Yeah, very underwhelming. Men. Like, is Azili back? He was terrible during the finals. I mean, Adams, Canner, Durant at the four, and, and some of the stuff that Thunder can do was it. Does Sabonis become a player? Like, the, 
the Thunder's young core is so to me is like growing while the while the Warriors uh, non stars main main guys are such unknowns. Uh, so I think that helps. Quick thing, do you think Kevin Durant is conniving enough to really, really drag the Warriors deeper into July, make them have to strip away and maybe trade a Bogut, a, you know, renounce Barnes or, or somebody signs Barnes on an offer sheet and the Warriors don't know about Durant. They think they're going to get Durant, so they don't match no. it. If he's, and then he goes back to the Warriors – or then he goes back to the Thunder because, wow, that would be a power move to just if, wipe some of the Warriors away. Well, the war- I think the Warriors – are, are smart enough to detect that. And he's genuine enough to just... I, I mean, look, look, to be... It would really competitively be a very smart thing for him to do, yes. but he's not... He's not He would devious. be hated for him. He's, <laughs> he's not devious. If he did do that, I mean, wouldn't that wouldn't that indicate that he's going to sign long-term with the Thunder? Yeah, it, it would for sure. He will. And now, the, the one interesting thing about the Warriors is that if he's going to sign with Golden State, it's pretty much going to be this year, in all likelihood. The other people, Boston, Miami, whoever we're talking about, can wait mm-hmm. a year. Golden State has to make decisions because they've got such a roster With shift. Barnes, oh, you know, you can always unload. You can always unload, but I don't know that it's 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 going to be a lot. It's not easy this year. Um, it, it's easier than you think but, because but, so many teams are going to have space that they're not filling. Where it's like, hey, will you just take Andrew Bogut for nothing? Basically, like, sure, we'll take. Yeah, that's fine. Like the Sixer, you know. Whatever team, because there's going to be so much fruit money out there. What I'm saying is, unloading Bogut and Barnes and whoever to make way for Kevin Durant is a good play. Unloading Bogut and Barnes and whoever, so that a year from now, you might be able to get Kevin Durant. I mean, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. In other words, it's not a gamble if you do it this year. It's a gamble if you're planning to. I think yeah, and, and teams in their position shouldn't just throw away you years. You don't exactly throw away right. years. No, that's no, no. Exactly that, right. that is a good point. I think the I, I as you mentioned, I think the Warriors are going to go in and say if they don't get him this year, they may go after Batum or somebody or mm-hmm. you know a Noah, a Horford. I think they're going to really try to get you know a big guy in, even if it's not Kevin Durant. And frankly, Batum would be an upgrade over Harrison Barnes. Yeah, older, but I, I'd agree. Um It'll be interesting. How how public? Last thing here. How, how public do you expect this thing to be? Because you know a lot. Because look, other teams may leak some. Like, hey, how'd your meeting go? I'm sure you know the the but, Clippers will tell somebody. Yeah, we it went great, and that'll be out there. And then suddenly, how much do you think Kevin and his guys are gonna try to leak stuff? And you know the Thunder, whoever. Not like, at all. But I think. I think it won't be public, but it will be notorious or whatever the word is. There's going to be all kinds of things out there, as you've mentioned. But I don't think any of it's going to be substantial from the Durant camp. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I'm interested to see. I assume, like, is it going to be done at the Rock Nation offices in New York, wherever? Like, there's probably going to be people, like, staking out, like, Doc Rivers just walked in, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, so that part Tons of it will be that. interesting. It's – it's finally here. You know, we've this has kind of lingered over this franchise for two years, and now they're going to get this, what, week or two weeks of – probably a week. I would assume this is going to be done by, what, the 5th, 6th, 7th? Yeah, I mean – I don't know. Why would it go past the 4th? There's that report of him leaving for his tour on the 9th, so – I don't know why it go- – I mean, You, you want to know – because one thing you got to remember about this whole thing um, – the longer Kevin Durant leads Sports Center, he's the main story. Like that's just better for his brand. That's better for Nike. Like it's it's what uh, you know, everyone around him probably wants is that, you know, everyone is talking about him. Literally, he will be the sports story for as long as he drags it out. No doubt about it. Not that he should drag it out for, you know, as long as he can, but it wouldn't yeah, hey Kevin, why don't you just wait a couple of days, sit on it? Like, yeah, we'll leak another like quick thing that you're lean in this way, but don't decide for sure until the sixth or seventh. Yeah, nobody's going to call him a jerk about it because he's Kevin Durant. So No, and the truth is, wherever he goes two weeks from now, I mean, we'll, we'll be talking about how that team looks, how the rest of the league looks. But he's the first domino to fall in free agency. It'll be really interesting. And we will talk to you again on the other side. Durant, pull up jumper. Off the rim and Oh! And the Thunder win! Oh, come on, let's sing the Thunder song. All right. 
When you hear the sound of thunder, don't you get too scared. Just grab your thunder buddy and say these magic words. 